What is going on everybody? It is the Icebreaker here, back with another video for some more hockey content for you guys. And for today's video, this is going to be more of a controversial topic, especially when it comes to the NHL universe. But for today, I'm going to give you guys one player on each NHL team that I believe is the most overpaid. Obviously, I'm going to be covering the most underpaid player on every team as well for another video. But anyway, for today, most overplayed player for each team. Let's get right into it. So kicking things off with the Anaheim Ducks going in alphabetical here. Jacob Silverberg is the guy that I believe is the most overpaid on that Ducks team. You look at the Anaheim Ducks roster as a whole, I don't really see a ton of guys who are overpaid. The only guy that I really, you know, kind of hesitated uh, maybe giving uh, the spot to was Adam Henrique. Uh, he get, does get paid a little bit more at $5.825 million for the next two years as Jakob Silverberg gets five point two five for the next two years. But for Adam Henrique, I just think he's a slightly better player. Obviously, he's a center and he's healthier as well. Um, whereas for Jakob Silverberg, he has kind of been injury prone the last couple of seasons. And even when he is healthy, he doesn't give you much more than just third line production at best. So I think for, for a third liner to get paid north of $5 million, I just don't think that's a very fair deal. Uh, pretty bad contract for the Ducks, although it could be a lot worse. Only two years left on the deal. And the Ducks, you know, they're pretty good in terms of their contracts. Like I said, I have a lot of young guys that have to resign. But for Silverberg, I just think it was more of an obvious pick here. He's definitely the worst contract on that Ducks team. For the Arizona Coyotes, this is another pretty obvious one in my opinion. Andrew Ladd, definitely the most overpaid player on that Coyotes team. They're, you know, the Coyotes are a team that don't really have a ton of, uh, you know, high salary contracts. Like Clayton Keller's getting paid over $7 million, But especially, you know, the year he's coming off of, I didn't really think he's super overpaid. Uh, I mean, that's maybe debatable. But for Andrew Ladd, five and a half million dollars even though one year left on his deal he is a fourth liner at this stage of his career well past his prime definitely not the greatest contract but you know one year left but still the money definitely is not ideal next up for the boston bruins nick felino clearly not even not even a debate in my opinion is the most overpaid player on the boston bruins um, the Bruins are a team that have a ton of great value contracts. There's guys that you could throw in like are completely underpaid. Like, uh, well, right now, David Pasternak, I would say, is pretty underpaid. Brad Marchand is on a terrific contract. Uh, and he's going to be basically at the end of his prime by the time that $6.125 million deal uh, expires. So that's an amazing contract for them. And Patrice Bergeron, obviously, huge pay cut to return. David Krejci as well. But, you know, in the case of Nick Foligno, you know, he gave you fourth line production this past season i believe he only scored two goals and played almost the entire season uh getting paid nearly four million dollars again only one year but this is not worst contract this is most overpaid and for fourth line production that is just terrible value for the buffalo sabers my pick for the most overpaid player is jeff skinner and look i believe he's a good player he's coming off a great season 33 goals 63 points but you know Apologies to Sabres fans. You cannot convince me that Jeff Skinner is a $9 million player in this league. Um, $9 million bucks is typically a guy that you would pay is somebody who is a top 10, top 15 player in the league and a perennial 40-goal scorer. Jeff Skinner has had one 40-goal season over the course of his career, and that was only based off like the first half of that 2018-19 season where you know he lit up the league. I think first half of the year he had like 30 goals, and then once he signed that contract, he completely struggled. But obviously, he found his game again this past season, but he's not worth $9 million. I just, I don't think he's worth $9 million. He's not even a point per game player, never really has been over the course of his career. I just don't think this is quite fair value for him. Is he worth six and a half, seven million million? Yeah, you can convince me of that. But $9 million? No, definitely not. For those of you who are saying it should be Kyle Okposo, although I agree he's overpaid at $6 million, but you know, the one year left on his deal... I just couldn't resist not having Jeff Skinner as my pick. Just the fact that he has five years left and he's already 30 years old. Uh, I don't just, I don't see it aging quite as well. For the Calgary Flames, this is another easy one, of course. Milan Lucic, definitely the most overpaid player on this team. I mean, you could make the case for Nazem Kadri just because he's coming off one amazing season where he's over a point per game and he got a $7 million deal for, I believe, like seven years. Uh, that could be considered an overpayment and that contract could age horribly but at the same time he is still a top six player and I still believe he is you know kind of a number one center I do believe he does still have uh, you know that upside even though he is 30 years over 30 years old but 
I still think obviously he has the skill set. I mean, he proved it this past season. I see no reason why he shouldn't still be like a very productive player. But as for Milan Lucic, obviously he's a fourth liner, doesn't really produce much offense. Yes, he has the toughness, but you know, a guy getting paid north of five million dollars should not be playing on your fourth line. Simple as that. For the Carolina Hurricanes, there really wasn't any other option here. I just feel like a lot of their contracts are pretty good on that team. So I ultimately went with Jordan Stahl, who's making six million dollars. For this upcoming season um, obviously he's still a really good player and obviously very impactful but he is only a third line center I think most people would agree that he is just a third line center arguably maybe the best third line center in the NHL but third line players should not be getting paid six million dollars now obviously all these guys they signed it before you know their decline started but for Jordan Stahl's case he still shouldn't be making that much money for playing in a bottom six role. For the Chicago Blackhawks, this is a pretty obvious one. Jonathan Tays, definitely the most overpaid player on this team. Now, he could be a guy that's on the move very soon, but still $10.5 million for a guy who, you know, is coming off you know, an okay season, but only like 37 points, I believe it was. Uh, that's basically like third line production. I mean, you can make the case that he is an okay second line center, but I think mainly he probably would be more of a third line center at this stage of his career, unless he's just coming off a rough season, but he is over 30 years old. He's well past his prime. He's definitely just not worth that type of money at this stage of his career. So Jonathan Taze being the most overplayed player on the Chicago Blackhawks. The Colorado Avalanche, this was a little bit of an interesting one because again, they have a lot of star talent and they're all getting paid, you know, pretty fairly, I would say, but if there's one guy that I didn't really like the contract that they have now, it's Josh Manson. Uh, four and a half million dollars for the next four years. I'll be honest, I just, I don't think he's that good of a defenseman. I, th I think he's a third pair defenseman, honestly. Um, I wasn't overly impressed with him when he was acquired by the Ducks. You know, in the regular season, I didn't really think he was that great, to be honest. But he did improve his game a little bit in the playoffs. And I would say he was pretty important in the Avs winning that Stanley Cup. But... I just think especially for a guy who's now over 30 years old and is a defensive defenseman, probably not going to get you more than 20 points. I just don't understand why the Avs felt the need to throw that type of money at him, especially with all the amazing blue liners they already have. And they have to re-sign Nathan McKinnon. I just think they could have used some of that cap space to maybe make it easier for themselves to lock up a guy like Nathan McKinnon uh, long term. Obviously, he's a pending UFA at the end of the season. But yeah, I definitely think Madsen is slightly overpaid. I just, I don't think uh, he's worth that type of money. I just don't see him as a amazing top four defenseman anymore. And e even though he's not really an offensive guy either. So I, I just don't understand why uh, he's worth that type of money in the Avs eyes. But maybe that's just my opinion. But this next contract is definitely a lot worse. Worst, most overpaid player on the Columbus Blue Jackets, in my opinion, is definitely Erica Branson. He just signed this new contract four million dollars a year for the next four seasons this is no this is an egregious overpayment in my opinion erica branson is a third pair defenseman at best and you can argue he's even a seventh defenseman i i don't understand the blue jackets logic here i, I believe they're probably going to maybe put him in a top four role or something but for a guy like erica branson who's not really a point producer uh you know a lot older now not really an everyday nhl defenseman in the past he's always been kind of a seventh or a sixth guy i just don't like this contract whatsoever i think it's going to age poorly the dallas stars this is probably the most obvious contract uh, overpayment of any team tyler Sagan, clearly the most overpaid player on the dallas stars for the simple reason that he's just not a superstar player anymore and always had injury issues but he has not really been himself the last couple of seasons he can be a guy who can maybe get you about 50 to 55 points on a good season, but he's definitely not worth that type of money anymore. Uh, you look at also Jamie Benn is also very much overpaid, but obviously the tiebreaker being that Tyler Sagan gets paid more money and has more term left on his deal. So obviously Tyler Sagan definitely not worth this type of money. This is obviously given to a guy who's a top 10 player in the NHL and Tyler Sagan is just not what he once was. For the Detroit Red Wings, this is a fairly obvious pick as well. Ben Sherratt, definitely the most overpaid player for Detroit. Almost $5 million he's gonna get paid for the next four years. Look, I'm a Habs fan and I very much appreciate the type of work and effort that Ben Sherratt did put in. I believe, you know, he's he, he, he gets under opponent's skins, he's physical, you know, I, I think, you know, he did his job 
in, in on the route to the Habs making that finals run, but just the analytics do not support Ben Schrott whatsoever. He's not really much of a puck mover, although he's coming off a career high in points. He's not really that offensive and honestly not really the greatest in his own end either. So I just don't understand why the Red Wings wanted to put their faith in him and give him that type of money. I definitely think uh, it was a huge overpayment. I don't think any other team would have given him anything close to that. And I know the Red Wings, obviously, they want to shore up their blue line, you know, improve their, their defensive depth. But for Ben Schrott to get this type of money, he's definitely not worth it. Like, you can argue he's maybe only like a third pair defenseman, ideally. For the Edmonton Oilers, the player that I believe is the most overpaid is actually Darnell Nurse. Now, Darnell Nurse is a very good defenseman. Obviously, top four defenseman. You can argue he's top pair caliber. I think he's, you know, he's a very solid guy all overall. Um, I don't really think he has amazing offensive upside, but I still think he puts up decent numbers. And even defensively, he's not that bad either. But 9.25, eight years left, a deal kicking in now, that is not a good contract. I just don't think he's worth that type of money. Uh, you know, that's the type of money you give to a top five defenseman in the league. And Darnell Nurse, although he's good, he's definitely far from that. And get this. I don't even think he's the best defenseman on his team. I believe if he hasn't already, Evan Bouchard is definitely going to surpass him in that depth chart. Yeah, like Darnell Nurse, again, good defenseman, but this is a huge overpayment in my opinion. I just didn't really like the contract the day it was signed or was announced. I just, I don't really like this contract whatsoever. Now, he's still relatively young, but I don't think he has that potential of being a top five defenseman in the league. So this month, this cap hit, I just... I'm unsettled by it, I'll be honest. The Florida Panthers, this is a very obvious pick. Sergei Bobrovsky is clearly the most overpaid player there. $10 million cap hit, one of the more higher paid goalies in the NHL. Four years left on his deal, over 30 years old. Although he is coming off a fairly solid season, overall his career in Florida, in my opinion, has been quite a disappointment. Um, yeah, this is definitely an overpayment, especially now when you have Spencer Knight, who's going to be up-and-coming goaltender for that team former first round pick i really think he's going to step up and a guy like sergey bobrovsky you know could be turning into more of a tandem goalie and eventually may even be the backup uh by the end of that contract i really do believe that so you know a 10 million dollar player who could potentially be on the bench more often than not this contract is definitely going to continue to age like milk and it's already looked pretty bad just the way he's played in the panthers on the panthers uniform i just he's been very disappointing and this is definitely an overpayment for a guy like Sergey Bobrovsky, who's not even a top 10 goaltender in the league at this stage of his career, honestly. Now for the Los Angeles Kings, I really didn't really have any options left. My hands were kind of tied when it comes to this team. So I am going to say that Anze Kopitar is technically the most overpaid player on the Los Angeles Kings, simply of the fact that he is the highest paid player on that team and also just factoring in, you know, what he is as a player at this point of his career. Obviously, he's in his mid 30s now. He still is a really good center, and you can argue he's still, uh, you know, elite defensively. But I definitely think he is going to continue to decline. And already the past couple of years, he has declined, especially offensively. I still think, uh, you know, he's a good center, like I said, but definitely only a, like a 60-point centerman in my opinion. And I think you can argue that maybe he's not a legitimate number one center in this league anymore in comparison to what the average number one center looks like in the NHL today. So for that reason, just his decline, I definitely think at this stage of his career, a $10 million cap hit would definitely seem a little bit steep for a guy like Anze Kopitar and the caliber player that he is at this stage of his career. Now for the Minnesota Wild, this was one of the more tougher teams to find a player who I felt was overpaid. Uh, but obviously I wanted to pick someone for every team. So ultimately I did go with Jonas Brodeen, but I don't believe he's overpaid by that much to be honest. Now, it was between him and Matt Dumba. They both get paid $6 million, but obviously Brodeen has the tiebreaker because Dumba only has one year left in his deal, whereas Jonas Brodeen, 29 years old, I believe, has six years left on his deal. I could see that maybe aging a little bit poorly as the deal goes on, but as of right now, Jonas Brodeen is still a very solid top four defenseman, and you, know, you definitely need those type of guys on your team, so I can understand why Minnesota gave him a $6 million cap hit, and although I could... I could argue it, it is a little bit of an overpayment. It's not really by much. Like he could still be a four and a half, five million dollar uh, defenseman. It would, could be considered fair in my opinion. But yeah, it was really hard to pick Minnesota. But definitely 
uh, I guess Jonas Brodin would qualify as the most overpaid guy, but still a very solid player. So I don't know. Maybe maybe this doesn't qualify as a huge overpayment, but whatever. For the Montreal Canadiens, there were quite a few options to choose from, to be honest. I feel like there's a lot of guys on this team that you can really pinpoint as being overpaid. But ultimately, I did go with Brendan Gallagher just simply because of his cap hit and the term that he has left. Six and a half million dollars for five more seasons. Gallagher is 30 years old. Coming off maybe the worst season of his career, only had a seven goal season, although he was a little bit injured there. I don't think he played the whole year, but at the same time, that's still very disappointing for a guy like Brendan Gallagher, who, you know, the past four seasons was playing at like 30 goal pace in each of the past four years. He had the two uh, 30 goal seasons back to back in uh, 17, 18, and then 18, 19, and then the two years prior uh, before uh, this past season, he uh, was playing at basically a 30 goal pace. So, um, yeah, this is definitely an overpayment just based on the year he had last season. But also, I know a lot of people think that maybe he'll bounce back and, you know, has a full off season where he's you know, like fully healthy and, you know, he trains properly and whatever. But I, I, I'm i kind of on the boat where I, I think we've seen the best of Gallagher. I don't think he's going to, uh, we're ever going to see that 30 goal, perennial 30 goal player anymore. And just looking at where he's probably going to be fitting in the lineup, I really only see him as a third line forward on this team at best, especially with the plethora of wingers that Montreal has, especially entering the season. I don't see a really a scenario where Brendan Gallagher gets back gets back to form and becomes that 30-goal player once again. And I never really thought that 6.5 was that great of a deal for him because he really doesn't really produce more many points anyway. Like 50, I think, was roughly like the this career high. I think he's like a 50-point player at his peak, so... Definitely never really thought this was a great contract uh, the day it was signed, and I only think it's going to continue to get worse. For the Nashville Predators, the most overpaid player on that team is clearly Ryan Johansson. Eight million bucks a year for the next three seasons. Now, Ryan Johansson is coming off a pretty good bounce back season. I think he had like well over 50 points. And, you know, he's playing on a pretty good Nashville team, and he's definitely a very solid number two center. At least he showed it last year, but... For, you know, a 50-point guy is definitely not an $8 million player, in my opinion, especially for a guy who's only a number two centerman. Uh, he's never really shown that he can be, uh, you know, a lethal offensive player, I believe. is. I mean, he had one great season where he had around 70 points with Columbus. But for the most part, uh, when healthy, he's only been ma mainly a 50 to 60-point player when he's played at his best. So definitely an $8 million cap it is a little bit high for a guy like him. Uh, he, he never really showed at any point of his career that he's worth that type of money. So definitely a little bit overpaid. I don't understand why Nashville uh, went a little bit too high in the price there. For the New Jersey Devils, this is kind of similar to the Darnell Nurse situation in Edmonton. Dougie Hamilton, I would, I would think, is probably the most overpaid player on the New Jersey Devils. Now, you know, the Devils do have a lot of contracts here where they're getting, they're paying their, you know, their big guys a lot of money like Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, but I feel like those contracts are going to age well, especially with those guys being so, so young. But for Dougie Hamilton, he is 29 years old, $9 million, six years left on his deal, uh, has had struggles to stay healthy, uh, especially last season was a little bit disappointing. Even when he was healthy, he didn't quite uh, produce at the rate that I thought he would. Now, I still think overall he can still be a really good, solid top pair defenseman, especially offensively. He's one of the better offensive defensemen in the league, in my opinion. But at a $9 million cap hit, you're asking for him to be a Norris caliber defenseman. And Dougie Hamilton, although he's good, he's just simply not that. So I definitely think that uh, $9 million bucks for him is quite the overpayment. The New York Islanders, the most overpaid player, in my opinion, is Anders Lee. Now, you could have gone with a couple of other guys here like Kyle Palmieri and Jean Gabriel Pajot. I definitely think that they're both getting paid like $5 million. And, you know, they're both third line players, in my opinion, at the stage of their careers. Uh, so, definitely, it's a little bit of an overpayment. But for Anders Lee, I just think being a $7 million guy gave him the edge and also has four years left on his deal. And he is over 30 years old and he has had some injury issues over the past few seasons. This is a contract I definitely think is going to age a lot poorly. Uh, more poorly as time goes on now if he can stay healthy and be you know the perennial 30 goal player that we know he can be you know maybe he's only a 25 goal guy if he's fully healthy but yeah either way it's definitely a little bit of an overpayment in my opinion the new york rangers jacob truba in my opinion is clearly the most overpaid player on that team eight million dollars with four years remaining Obviously, I think he is still a very solid uh, top four defenseman. He's coming off a very good season, honestly. I believe he had close to 40 points 
Uh, and obviously, congrats to him being the new captain of the team. But I- I'm not convinced he's an $8 million player. I definitely think if he was getting paid more like Jonas Brodin around six, six and a half. I definitely think that's more fair for him, but Jacob Truba is not a top tier defenseman in the league, in my opinion. He should definitely should not be sniffing anywhere close to that type of money. And honestly, this is the risk you run when you want to throw all your money at someone who's coming who had you know one good season, right? I mean, the 50 point season he had in Winnipeg before he was ultimately traded to the Rangers uh, and signed that extension is a big reason why he got that money in the first place. But he ha- he has had some struggles, especially offensively. Uh, the first two years with the Rangers, but this past season he was a lot better. But still, I don't believe that uh, he's quite worth that $8 million cap hit. The Ottawa Senators, the player I believe is the most overpaid, is Nikita Zaitsev at $4.5 million for the next two years. Now, there are a lot of those young guys who have uh, gotten those new big-time contract extensions, like Josh Norris and Tim Stutzla, who are both going to be paying, uh, getting paid close to $8 million. I know Josh Norris is going to have close to $8 million, and Tim Stutzla is going to have well over $8 million, and I believe it kicks at the beginning of next season. But at the same time, those are two really young players who have bright futures, and I think those contracts are going to age quite well uh, as the time goes on. Breast for Nikita Zaitsev, I just don't think he's a good defenseman, to be completely honest with you. I don't think uh, he's worth that type of money i think he's a third pair defenseman at best uh yeah four and a half million dollars you don't pay that type of money for a defenseman of his caliber simply put the philadelphia flyers just based on everything all signs of it the cap hit the term kevin hayes in my opinion is the most overpaid flyer uh over seven million dollars with four years left i believe he's about about 30 years old now um, yeah, he is a good center when he is healthy. I think he is capable of putting up some good second line minutes and second line production being roughly a 50 point player, but he has had that injury, those injury issues. But even when he is healthy, he has never really shown that he's worth that type of money. And everybody knew that, you know, the moment he signed that contract that it was a bit of an overpayment for him. You know, he's just not a number one center and he got paid like one. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, there really wasn't any other option because I feel like for the Penguins, everybody gets kind of paid fairly. So there really wasn't any other place I could go here or any other direction. But, you know, Jason Zucker is clearly the most overpaid guy. Five and a half million dollars, even though he has one year remaining. Ever since coming to Pittsburgh, he's just been a massive disappointment. Um, You know, he's had some injury issues, but even when healthy, he hasn't been all that productive. You know, I would say he's nothing more than a third line player at this stage of his career. Or maybe he just needs to change the scenery, but it just hasn't worked out for the Penguins. And yeah, definitely, you know, a guy getting paid over $5 million, he's just not worth it. Uh, you know, playing in the third line role. For the San Jose Sharks, it's pretty clear to me that Eric Carlson is the most overpaid player. $11.5 million a season for five more years. Um, He's just not the defenseman he was in Ottawa. And ever since coming to San Jose, although he's had some, you know, decent showings offensively at times, he's just not the same guy. He's had a plethora of injury problems every single season he's played ever since coming to San Jose. Um... And yeah, even his his elite offensive game has just taken a massive step back. And obviously, he's past the prime of his career. He's over 30 years old now. And I just think, you know, it's going to continue to age poorly. $11.5 million is a lot. And you're looking at a guy who, you know, is getting paid like the best defenseman in the NHL. And he is far from that, although he used to be. Now, for the Seattle Kraken, this was maybe the most difficult to pick because I look at the roster that they have and all the contracts that these guys are getting paid and I don't see anybody that's really egregiously overpaid so I just went with Jamie Alexiak getting paid 4.6 for four more years you know just you know the the cap hit in the term I think is what you know gave me that conclusion that Jamie Alexiak's the most overpaid guy in the Seattle Kraken only because for the fact that he is a defensive defenseman, and I just don't think that, you know, typically you should be paying defensive defensemen that type of money. Although I feel like he has done his role fine in a top four role, especially with Dallas. But even with Seattle, I thought he was okay. So, you know, this is not a huge overpayment, but th- there's really not many terrible contracts on the Seattle Kraken as it is. So I just went with him. For the St. Louis Blues, the most overpaid player, in my opinion, is Nick Letty. Uh, defenseman well over 30 years old four million dollars for another four seasons I just think he's well past the prime of his career although he can put up some decent offensive numbers he's just definitely not the player he once was and uh, you know obviously this contract is definitely going to age poorly because 
I don't see him really as anything more than someone who can quarterback a second power play unit and uh, you know maybe just be a third pair defenseman because I never really consider him to be a great defend defensively anyway. So yeah, I, I don't see this as a great contract. All right, Tampa Bay Lightning. This is definitely the most controversial take of this video, I think, hands down. But you know what? I genuinely believe that Braden Point is the most overpaid player on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, you guys might be saying, well, what about Eric Chernak and Mikhail Sergachev? You know, those contracts kicking in, those look like huge overpayments as of right now. And that may be true, but those contracts do not kick in until the start of next season, so I did not want to include them. There's no question that Braden Point is a great player. You can argue he is a superstar. I think he's more of an all-star caliber player, but still a really good player. A legit number one centerman um, can hover around a point per game a very solid defensively steps this game up in the playoffs for me at 9.5 million dollars you are among the highest paid players in the league and that it would tell me that you are supposed to be among the best players in the nhl and although i think i think Braden point is a very good player i just don't quite put him in that same class and when you look at his career statistics apart from one season he has never had an a point per game an above point per game season and i just think you have to be at an elite level especially like consistently in the regular season and the playoffs you have to be a consistent elite player and you know statistically he has not shown that he can be a consistent above a point per game player and a guy who's getting paid nine and a half million dollars is expected to be at that elite level consistently i definitely think that's a bit much for a guy like Braden point now he is a good player he's number one center but I just think from the based on the production that he's given us, I do think that is a little bit of a steep price, but definitely it's not an egregious overpayment, but like seven and a half, eight million maybe, but 9.5, I think is a bit much in my opinion. And for the Toronto Maple Leafs, John Tavares would be the most overpaid player in my opinion. This is very similar to my logic on Braden Points and John Tavares the past three seasons has not been a, above a point per game player. And especially his contract's even worse. I mean, yeah, less term, only three years left, and he is a lot older though. But eleven million dollars, you are a top five player in the NHL, or expected to be. And John Tavares is definitely far from that at this stage of his career. Obviously, he's still a really good center. He would be a number one center on at least half of the teams in the league. But still, that is an egregious overpayment, especially from his production and even his like five on five play he's been a lot more inconsistent especially last season uh, a lot of people complained about that and i believe his defensive game also took a slight step back and you know obviously he's getting a little, little bit older so i can't really see him like getting any better i honestly only project him to get worse at this stage of his career from here on out so yeah 11 million dollars for john Tavares. look still a great centerman but you can't tell me he's worth that type of money especially at this stage of his career those are paid, you know, that type of money is paid to top five players in the league and at worst top 10 players in the league. And John Tavares, in all honesty, arguably is not even a top 10 centerman in the NHL at this stage of his career. The Vancouver Canucks player that I believe is the most overpaid is Oliver Ekman Larson. Obviously, you got to throw in Tyler Myers as an honorable mention. He is getting paid six million dollars against the cap, but he only has two years left on his deal. Whereas Oliver Ekman Larson has another five years left on his deal and is over 30 years old. I just don't understand uh, why, I think, I think the Coyotes signed this contract, I believe, but why would throw this type of money at him? Obviously they could afford it because they had a ton of cap space, but for Oliver Ekman Larson, he's never really been a legitimate number one defenseman. Although he has been the number one guy, you know, technically on, the, on a bad Arizona Coyotes team, I've always considered him to be slightly overrated. I never thought he was an elite offensive player. I know he's had a couple of 20 goal seasons, maybe only had one, but I just, I never consider him to be an elite offensive player and defensively, I always thought it was slightly overrated. So if this is definitely an overpayment, especially on Vancouver, you know, he is a second pair defenseman at best, I would say, um, you know, if he could be a five, five and a half million dollar player, I think that's probably more fair, but definitely over $7 million for a guy of Oliver Ekman Larson's caliber, definitely way too high. Now for a team like the Vegas Golden Knights, there are a lot of players that are getting paid a lot of money. So for a team that it should be kind of simple to find it, uh, the most overpaid player, it was a little bit tough because yes, there is a guy, a lot of players who are getting paid a lot of money, but to be honest, I don't think there's a one player that's getting paid like significantly more than they should be. Like you look at Jack Eichel, yes, he's getting paid $10 million, 
But when healthy, I still consider him to be an elite number one centerman. So I don't think that's too far off. Mark Stone is a perennial point per game player. He's one of the best two way uh, players in the league. Uh, fully healthy, getting paid nine and a half. I don't think that's really that steep of a price. I ultimately went with Alex Petrangelo getting paid near $9 million, even though he is still a really good defenseman. He is a top pair caliber defenseman. Uh, you know, obviously he's a little bit older, he's over 30 years old, but at the same time, like, still a great defenseman. But I guess I went with him just because I, I, I guess of all the guys who would be overpaid on the Vegas Golden Knights team, I guess I would view him as the most overpaid but it's really not by much I, I mean i definitely think he is uh definitely worth like a seven and a half million dollar cap hit I, I guess nine million is more considered like a top five defenseman and alex petrangelo i don't believe is a top five defenseman in the league but at the same time uh still not that bad but yeah it definitely is a little bit overpaid for the washington capitals this is a pretty obvious one in my opinion nicholas backstrom is definitely the most overpaid capital um, over 30 years old, has been injury prone the last couple of seasons, getting paid north of $9 million with three years left on his deal. Uh, I, yeah, this is not really a good con contract. Obviously, Nick Backstrom has had a great career as a Stanley Cup champion, uh, one of the better playmaking centers in, you know, in recent memory, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I just think he's never really been that type of elite player, in, in my opinion, in terms of his production. Uh, I never viewed him as the greatest defensive player, although I guess you could say he's a little bit underrated, but at, at the same time, I just never thought he was that great of a player uh, overall. And uh, even his offense, yes, the, the assists were there, setting up with Vetchkin, you know, that duo was great in their primes, and, you know, he still is a decent player when healthy, but at the same time, um, he's only had one, maybe two seasons where he was above a point per game, so... You know, just just off of that fact, it is the production wise. You know, you gotta you gotta be a an above point per game player to be considered uh, worth nine plus million dollars. And Nicholas Backstrom simply is not. <laughs> now I'm probably gonna end off on a weird one here, but for the Winnipeg Jets, I really really struggled to find anyone that was like significantly overpaid. I looked at some of the defensemen here that maybe are a little bit overpaid, like Nate Schmidt at almost six million dollars, or Neil Pionk at almost six million dollars as well but for the most part i didn't think it was like too egregious so i just went with adam lowry just because he has four years left on that deal at 3.25 million dollars um he's just coming off a really rough season um he's nothing more than a third line center and you know he's just the bottom six player and i just you know that contract could potentially just age poorly if he continues to decline and just not be the same uh, offensive player he was he never really was that great offensively anyway obviously being a you know perennial bottom six player but yeah i guess he is slightly overpaid just because of his production is la or lack of it and uh you know just just the contract is not the greatest i guess but yeah this was an interesting video um this is going to wrap up who i believe is the most overpaid player on each and every nhl team as always i enjoy your thoughts i want to hear all your thoughts in the comment section let me know if you agree with these picks or if you disagree and if so tell me why you disagree and uh, what would be who would be some of your uh, overpaid players uh, on each team if, if i didn't name any or i failed to mention uh, some of them even uh yeah let me know in the comments section as always thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate the support it means the world to me and i'll talk to you in the next video i'll see you guys later